Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can set up your very own virtual machine on Windows 10. We're gonna use something called Hyper-V to do that. But first, what is a virtual machine? So I have this computer sitting in back of me, and that's my computer. A virtual machine is kind of like having another computer, but instead of being another physical computer, it's another virtual computer. I can install whatever operating system I want on that computer. I could put another copy of Windows 10 on, I could put Mac OS on, or even Linux. I could go ahead, I can install whatever applications on that new virtual machine, and I could even open whatever files I want. Now, I did a video a little while back on the Windows Sandbox. And if you watch that video, this probably sounds very similar. If you haven't watched it, I've also included a link down below in the description. Now with the Windows Sandbox, that's a very lightweight virtual machine. So you could launch another copy of Windows 10, you can install apps, you could open up files, and once you close it down, that virtual machine goes away. None of those apps or files persist if, let's say, you open the Sandbox again. With Hyper-V, it's kind of like the Sandbox, but it offers a lot more functionality. If you install apps or if you open files, those persist between your different sessions. Also, you have access to a lot more settings. You could decide how much memory or CPU you wanna to allocate to your virtual machine. So it has quite a bit of functionality. First, we're gonna look at how you can, first off, check your system to make sure your system requirements are sufficient to run Hyper-V. Then we're gonna look at how you can enable Hyper-V and then we'll set up our very first virtual machine. All right, well, why don't we jump on the computer and let's get started. Here I am on my Windows 10 PC. And first off, let's check to make sure that your computer qualifies for running Hyper-V. To do that, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, let's type in system information. Next, let's click on the best match. This opens up system information and you can see all sorts of information about your computer. Now there are two things here that we're interested in. Up at the very top, you wanna to check the OS name that you have. To be able to run Hyper-V, you need either Windows 10 Professional or Enterprise. If you have Home, unfortunately you won't be able to run it, but you can upgrade very easily, and in a moment I'll show you how you can do that. Along with that, right down here under System Type, you also need to have an X64 based PC. If you have a relatively new computer, you'll likely qualify. There is one more thing you need in place, but we won't be able to check that here. You also need to make sure that within your BIOS, you have virtualization set to enabled. Now, how do you check your BIOS and how do you even get there? Well, when you boot up your computer, you've probably seen text before that says, press the F12 key or the escape key to enter setup. When you press that, you'll see an option for virtualization and you just have to make sure that's enabled. With my computer, it was already enabled by default, so I didn't even have to do that step. With that now out of the way, hopefully you qualify, but let's say that you have Windows 10 Home and you'd really like to run virtualization on your computer. Like I said, it's pretty easy to upgrade. If you already have Windows 10 Pro, feel free to jump forward to the next chapter. To upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in activation. Once you type in activation, let's click on the best match. This will open up the activation screen for Windows. And if you have Windows 10 Home, here at the bottom, you'll see an option that allows you to upgrade to professional. When you click on this link, it'll take you to the Microsoft Store and then you can upgrade. It costs about $99 to upgrade, so it is somewhat expensive, but you do get some additional functionality. Not only can you set up virtual machines like Hyper-V and Sandbox, but you can also do things like a remote desktop. This allows you to connect to other computers. Also, you can encrypt your hard drive using BitLocker. Now for the typical home user, these things might not be necessary, but if you feel like you're a pro user and you want some additional capabilities, I'd recommend going forward and getting pro. Okay, so we're finally ready to turn on Hyper-V. To do that, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in turn Windows features on or off. Right here, let's click on the best match. This opens up a prompt with Windows features, and there are a ton of different Windows features here. And surprisingly, if you look over here, many of these are turned off by default. If you're wondering why that is, well, it's probably functionality that a few people use, but it doesn't make sense to turn on for everyone. Right here in the initial view, right near the top, we'll see an option for Hyper-V, and by default, it's turned off. Let's click into this box and check it. Also, earlier in this video, I mentioned that there's a lightweight virtual machine called the Sandbox. If we scroll all the way down this list, you can enable that as well if you wanna play around with it. Now, once again, I've included a link to a video in the description if you wanna learn more just about the Sandbox. 
Now that we have all of the appropriate checkboxes checked, let's click on OK. If this is your first time doing it, you'll likely also have to reboot your computer, so go through the reboot and then rejoin this video. Let's now click on OK. And now that you've rebooted your machine, we're just about ready to create our very first virtual machine. Right down here on the taskbar, let's go into the search field and then type in Hyper-V Manager. Next, let's click on the best match. This drops us into the Hyper-V Manager and we're going to use this interface here to manage all of our virtual machines. Over on the left hand side, you can see all of the different servers and one of them right here should look familiar, that's your computer name. You can set up a virtual machine on your computer, but here if we click on Hyper-V Manager, we can also connect to another server. And another server is basically just another computer that's running virtual machines. And what's neat is that you can manage virtual machines on both your computer or even on other computers, or what's referred to here as a server. Today, we wanna to create a virtual machine on our computer. So over on the left-hand side, let's click on your computer name. Now that you've clicked on your computer name, you'll see that the screen here updated. We have a whole bunch of different screens and panels here in the center, and in a moment, we'll come back to what you can do with these. Over on the right-hand side, you also see all of these different actions. By far, the easiest way to set up a virtual machine is to click on Quick Create. This opens up a prompt where we can specify all of the details of our virtual machine. Over on the left-hand side, you can select the operating system that you want to install. So down below, I could install another instance of Windows 10, or I could even put on a flavor of Linux Ubuntu. Let's say I wanna install Mac OS or maybe some other version of Linux. Down below, I can click on local installation source. And here I could point to an ISO file and that'll install a different operating system. Now, just to keep things simple, I'm gonna go with Ubuntu. When I select this over on the right hand side, if I scroll down, I can see how large the download size is. So first I'll have to download the file before I can install it onto my virtual machine. There's also a drop down right here with some additional options. When I click into this, I can give my virtual machine a name. I'll type something in. I'll give it the descriptive name test machine. Right down here, I could also select my network switch. Here, I'll just go with the default. Now we're all ready to set up our virtual machine. Next, let's click on create virtual machine. This will kick off the setup process. If you haven't downloaded the OS yet, you'll have to go through the download process, but once you've done that, it'll kick off your new virtual machine. We've now successfully created our virtual machine and I could immediately start connecting to it or I could go through and edit the settings. For now, I wanna close this window and I'll show you how you could access these different settings from the main interface. We're now back in the main interface and we have our new virtual machine show up right here in the list. And here we'll see that the virtual machine is currently turned off. To turn it on, I could click on this item and over on the right hand side, I can click on start. Alternatively, I can also right click on this item and then I could click on start. Why don't we start our virtual machine? Now that the virtual machine has started, we'll see that it's running, it's currently consuming some CPU, and you could also see the uptime. Down below, we also see checkpoints. And you might be wondering, well, what is a checkpoint? Basically, if you're going to, let's say, install an application, or maybe you're gonna make some changes to your operating system, you can set up a checkpoint. So if you ever wanna roll back to that point in time, you can very easily do that. Now, when I kicked off my test machine for the very first time, it automatically created a checkpoint. Over on the right-hand side, right here, I can also manually create a checkpoint whenever I want. Down below, I can also see some of the details of my test machine. Now, before we jump into the test machine, let's click into settings to see some of the things that we can do. Within settings, here I can go through and I could modify different aspects of my virtual machine. Here I could allocate different amounts of memory. I could also allocate different amounts of my processor. And here, if I go down, I could rename my machine again. So let's say I didn't give it a good name during the setup process, I can change that. Back on the main screen, I can also go through and I could move the VM to a different computer or I could even export it so maybe someone else can use this VM. So we've now gone through a few of the different settings and I think it's time to jump into our virtual machine. Over here on the left-hand side, I can see my test machine. And if I double click on this image, this will launch up my virtual machine. So right now, this is the first time I'm launching this. And so I have to go through the operating system installation process. Now I've already gone through and I've set up a separate virtual machine where I've already gone through the setup process. Here I could click on the virtual machine and this will allow me to connect to it. This opens up a completely separate machine and this has a different operating system running on it. 
Here I can launch the web browser, I can navigate to different websites, I can install applications, and everything that happens within this virtual machine is separate from my computer. So in a sense, anything that happens on a virtual machine stays on the virtual machine. Once I'm all done using this virtual machine, I can close it. And once again, anything that happens there is separate from my machine. Here in the list, I can see that all of my virtual machines are currently running and they're gonna use some memory and they're also gonna use some CPU. If I no longer need it running, I can right click on it and I can either turn it off or I could shut it down. Here I'll just turn it off and that'll shut down this virtual machine. Let's say that maybe I don't need this virtual machine anymore. I can right click on it and I can simply delete it altogether and that virtual machine will be gone. If I wanna launch another virtual machine, I could go back and I could create another one over here in the action menu. All right, well, that's how easy it is to set up your very own virtual machine. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other videos on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.